I'm not saying that Bloom needs to hope that their debut record is as good as any of the five that I've mentioned here. Spoiler alert! It might not be on that level, but it's pretty fucking good! I only just briefly talked about this album last week, and I didn't intentionally mean to telegraph what the next video was going to be about, but the unintended consequence of mentioning it then just meant it was the only thing I wanted to make a video about this week. Nothing else was really as interesting. The singles were really good, the hype around this band was really high, and coming off a video where we just discussed really good debut albums, for a while I've been curious about where this one fits in that pool. Bloom have a discography going back to 2017, including three standalone singles, two EPs, and one live collection, but over the past seven years have amassed a pretty respective audience in the melodic hardcore space if sheer numbers are anything to go by. And they really took their time getting around to a full-length debut. Their last EP release was over three years ago. So when they finally got to it, how'd they do? Pretty fucking good. Maybe In Another Life is a pretty perfect example of something I call the Darth Maul effect. This makes sense, bear with me. We see Darth Maul in episode one, he's a total badass and everybody loves him, but we only see him for a little bit and that leaves us wanting way more. Then he gets resurrected in the Clone Wars for a bit and it's considerably less cool and that craving to see him has already worn off. Bloom wrote an album that's 10 tracks long and only 30 minutes and completely avoids the Darth Maul effect. I would trademark that, but I don't want the mouse coming and shanking my wallet in the middle of the night. But that's the thing, 30 minutes is all this album needs. Bloom were already knee-deep in the melodic hardcore and post-punk pit, and now they've added some more modern metalcore riffage to their repertoire. And when this part of the genre has already been done to death by band after band, that 30 minutes is perfect to ensure it never overstays its welcome. Nothing on Maybe In Another Life ever feels too long or drawn out for the sake of it. Some might argue it's too short. Laughing Stock is only 70 seconds long, and there's only one track of 10 that goes above four minutes. But it's why this record feels like such a breath of fresh air. It's a take on melodic, modern, post-hardcore that feels like it has the soul of a punk album. And not the least of which because the vocals can really cut you deep if you let them. You go from an intro track to three songs that mostly rip, three songs where we get slower and more emotional and let the clean vox take over, and then another three songs that go back to rip but fuse more of the clean emotion in right at the very end. So it feels like a pretty cohesive three-part story musically, and that's a really cool thing to accomplish with only 30 minutes to work with. Some tracks feel right at home with the pit at a hardcore festival. <laughs> Some feel like the end credit music to a coming-of-age high school movie. But my appreciation for this album comes in how well executed those ideas are and makes me want even more of it, even though the portion size that we have is exactly the right amount. It is not Darth Mauling itself. Oliver throws down some heavy screams on the title track, which contrasts nicely to Jono's usual scream tone. I really like Jared's singing voice in general, and at the very end of Through the Threshold Beyond the Bend, just as the record closes, Jono slips into this really cool spoken word passage that feels like the apex of the album's emotional release. The vocals on this project all around are enough to remind you that while these guys might be on their debut, they have been doing this for quite a long time. The thing is, you might say that none of this is exactly new, and I get that. It's a bit newer for Bloom because there's a distinct difference between this and the last EP they released, but maybe you're having difficulty figuring out what differentiates this from another well-known band doing mostly the same stuff. The counterparts comparisons feel pretty unavoidable with this one for a myriad of reasons, but I'll be upfront, I don't really take umbrage with that. Maybe In Another Life feels like Nothing Left to Love and Eulogy met up with Jake Steinhauser from Polaris and went, I let's fuck shit up and make people cry while we do it. Also, I'm not specifically mentioning Jake just because he's also Ozzy and also plays metalcore. That's just the first vocal comp that came to my head and I like it, so I'm sticking with it. Songs in D or C tunings, specifics in guitar tone, riffs with a select few harmonics, lyrical subjects, super polished production, there's a bunch of comps to counterparts. 
But I love both these records, so fuck it, I don't care. I think it's more complimentary of how well Bloom have taken the existing tropes of metalcore and melodic hardcore and any other made-up word you want to use to describe the fact that this is basically just rock music with yelling and still done enough with those elements to make their identity known to the rest of the world. They're not a counterparts clone, they're adding their own flavor to it. And as somebody who enjoys that kind of music anyway, I'm never going to say no to more of it. A lot of people are going to find Bloom for the first time through this album. Signing with Pure Noise is going to help that, as is having even more material to tour with. But whatever parallels you can find from this album to the rest of the genre, the fact remains that the single best thing Bloom could have done for their careers was launch an album that executes on those parallels as fantastically as this one does. It may still be early in their careers, their work still might show some signs of youthful inexperience in the industry, their band name might be super similar to a very specific Outback Steakhouse dish. Which is really funny because they're Australian! All of that is something that I can forgive because as far as this album is concerned, it both does and doesn't feel like a debut. I think those guys should be really proud of what they've made and it's going to be a lot of fun to watch their career bloom and take them to the next level. I've been holding that joke in all fucking video. <laughs> Go listen to this album.